Hello everybody, it's Boost Knowledge again. Uh, sorry because we haven't been uploading for a very long time, but uh, you know what, we are back with another video. And this is actually the re-uploading of one of my old videos. Uh, it's called The Italian Opening Max Range Attack. And before in the video I spelled it range, but it's actually wrong, it's Max Lange Attack with an L. And we're back with some very fun chess content for you guys. Uh, so this is the Italian opening max range attack, and that's actually the Gokyo piano game, and it's both sides are perfectly developed. And uh, the normal variations continue with d3, rookie 1, or knight to c3, and these are perfectly fine. You're developing your pieces, you're building up space, you're um, moving pieces to develop pieces, etc. But then you play the star to move d4, sacrificing the pawn. And you're like, why? There are actually three variations. Bishop to d4, e to d4, and knight to d4. But actually, in this position, most players play pawn to d4, pawn takes d4, which is not that bad and not that good. We will uh, look at the other variations in another video, and I promise it'll be uploading very quickly. So it takes, and then you play e5. So the, what's the point on this move of sacrificing the pawn? Black literally wins the pawn, you can't take back. Because now you attack the knight. And white's aim is to have less material, but wreck havoc. You know what I mean. The knight has to move. Knight to g4 is good, knight to h5 is stupid, knight to e4 is giving up a knight, and knight to g8 is trash. And that is. So, what black can do now is either knight to g4 and sacrificing the horse, or a counter attack. d5. And now many players are like, oh, I can do m plus some, look how smart I am. e takes d6. If people who don't know m plus some, uh, just check it out on chess.com or search it up in Google. Uh, actually, it's not that good to play M plus Uh, it's like taking on the d5 pawn and for the e5 pawn to appear on d6. It goes like this. Something like this. But it's not that good, because after M plus what happens is black v takes the pawn, and you don't get any advantage now. You've literally, you are literally a pawn down. There's a pawn in d4, and that's an outpost. And boom, you're losing. So the best move is to take the knight. And although you do lose the bishop, you get your pawn on g7, the seventh rank. And the black is actually only forced to play g8, rook g8. And that's when things get complicated. And many of you will play rook. A bishop to h6, thinking that you can defend the pawn, but that's not actually good. If you play bishop to h6, black will simply play a uh, bishop to e6, and once fend up your e1, rook to e1 checks, two, he would then uh, put the queen up and then castle queenside. And that's actually bad for you, because then you are in a losing position, you are a pawn now, the c4 and d4 pawns are devastating for you, and then the g7 G file is open, and you can never get your pawn to promotion. So the good move is to wreak more havoc. Bishop to g5, attacking the queen. The best move to play now is, like, there are five variations, and there are even more. A guy actually said, why not play queen to d7? Another guy even suggested taking the pawn, which I think is stupid. Well, who are those guys? Well, I've seen the matches. Boom. So the best move to play is... Bishop to e7, and the, and you, some of you play rook to e1, thinking that you can pin, and that's not a bad move either. But the safest move is to play bishop to e7, and after, uh, the best thing is knight takes, but you can also take with the queen, etc. You get the pawn back, they take your pawn, you develop some pieces, and threaten lots of stuff, and the king literally walks into the middle of the board. And you're like, well, Black's king is not in a good position, well, I'm winning. You're actually not, because uh, you Black actually has from good chances, including on the, G, on the G2 file, and the king actually can target some of your pawns and some of your knights. But look at this. 
you have two rooks, they have two rooks. You have two knights, they have a knight and a bishop. They have one, two, three, four, five pawns, you have six pawns. You're actually a pawn up. Wait, oh wait, you're not a pawn up. Uh, they have six pawns, you have six pawns. It's actually a drawn position, and if you let uh, Hecarou or Magnus Carlsen or 200 euros, one, sorry, 1,000 euros play, I'd say they get this to a draw. And boom, that's the normalist, the normalist variation. And then things begin to get crazy. Remember when I said bishop to g5, there are many variations? Let's get to the second one. f6, which seems to be attacking the bishop, but it's actually not that good, because then it get, it gives your e-file exposed, because then you check before... Oh, sorry, guys. Very sorry. When you play bishop to e7, if, if you played something like... Like, let, let's say... Queen to d6, for example. That's a later variation. And now black decide to check on e1. I'm not saying that's a good, but that's a bad move. But then black has the idea of playing bishop to e6. And what that means is that black is going, literally going to castle queenside, and you can't record any havoc. You are literally a pawn down. But actually, white still can play this position, but it's kind of like this idea of a Stopping black from making the game as normal as possible. So f6 actually ruins the plan. Ruins black's plan, not white's. Because you check. And now black is now completely unable to play bishop to e6. And we'll have you play queen to f7. And we're like, why do you have to play king to f7? You can literally just play something like, oh, sorry, guys. Like bishop to e7. Because then you take the pawn and, uh, 1, g7 is protected, 2, bishop is in pain. And after a sequence of some moves, uh, white has some advantage. Black literally just manual castled, and both sides are equal. So let's go back to the position. King to f7. It actually puts the king at a better square, and it targets the g7 pawn. And it's also putting the bishop in tempo. So actually now white is forced to go to h6, and... Uh, Boom. The good move here is to play rook to e8. And I know some of you will play uh, king to g6 thinking that you can get the bishop, but that's not that good because then you play this. And after some sequence of moves, you are forced to go back to f7. So avoid king to g6. So rook to e8, trying to change the rooks. And taking the rooks is completely fine. What happens is this. And some... Very long sequence of moves, which some don't make sense, but, well, how you understand. Boom. And then actually it's a very held-drawn position, and, uh, well, I'd say it's not a draw. And at this point you might ask, wait, boost knowledge, why are all these draws? Why play such a risky opening and not play something normal like the Four Knights game? Well... We know in chess we like to try out new openings and it's fun this way. Okay, let's go back. Rook to b8. And most of you just take and make the position the draw. However, you get this very interesting variation. Sacrificing the knight! And in this position, black can only play king to g6 and after some interesting moves, it's drawn. However, if black gets greedy and takes your sacrifice, you take rook to e8, queen to e8, queen e8, 5 check, king to g8 or e7, I don't care. g8 gets mate in 2. Queen to e7, bishop to g5 check, king to d7, takes and take and you get promotion and you are winning. And that's the point of sacrificing the knight. However, this is not the best opinion. You will just have to wait for black to take your knight. Well, where was I? Oh, yes. We finished the f6 variation. Back to bishop g5. Uh, we finished this and this. So let's go to the boringest variation. 
1987. And in 1987, there's really nothing you can say. Play rook to e1, knight to b, knight bd2, or c3, suggested by Stockfish. The point of c3 is to try to get the queen. The bad move to play here is to take the knight with the bishop, and that's completely useless. Black is just going to recapture with the bishop. So, well, that's all for those first three variations. Let's move to the interesting variation. Queen to d6. And then we check and check and go here. Black now has to be very, very careful. Because if he plays something stupid, and also pointing out the, the bishop is guarding the d8 square and black can't castle. Like, um, let's say, rook to g7. You can get easily forked. The best thing to play is queen to d5, which I'll explain later. And then you get this interesting series of moves. When black loses the knight, sorry, black loses the rook, and is half a piece down. And when you might say that black is stupid and losing, actually black has a better position. And, and try this out. Go to this position, and nearly in every position, black will get forked. Actually, there are ways that can stop the fork. For example, playing something stupid like putting your <laughs> queen back to d7, or something like that. But that's lame. And what black wants now is to have disadvantage over pieces, but have advantage over the partition. And black just randomly walks into a fork and stuff like that. But however, white have to, has to protect, especially the bishop on g5, either trade it or protect it, but never let black freely capture it. For example, if now you lose the bishop for, for whatever reason, then you're losing. No matter what you get, even a queen. So, queen to d6 on the last variation, but it's queen to d5, and that's actually more bad as, I mean, bad, than queen to d6. And then you play the brilliant move knight to c3, and you think, why? And uh, Mr. White King, I'm sorry, but I'm sacrificing your knight. Never mind. It's actually not a sacrifice because if pawn takes the queen takes the queen and the queen is not protected. So uh the best move to pl is to play queen to f5 and after some checks black literally walks into forks loses the queen or loses the rook and stuff like that. And you're like why does black have to do that? Same thing. Uh lose lose material, gain better position and stuff like that. So, in this position, black loses a queen, and there's a half a piece down, calculate yourself, but black can now easily castle and target white on the king side. So, well, if white doesn't mess up, equal. If black messes up, white wins. And, well, back to queen to d5. Some people will play queen to e6, trying to avoid it, and... Uh, the plan, the plan now is not to play rook to e1 because that doesn't pin and does nothing. Well, it does pin, but that's not fun. You play this, and then after a series of interesting moves where you sacrifice nearly everything, you get the queen. And and this series where interestingly four pieces got lined together, you get nearly everything. So, very interesting position, guys. Black is half a piece up. So, well... Back to the drawing board. So, everybody, uh, this is a very interesting position, and notice it's only part of one out of three. One out of three, guys. So, it's going to get more and more complicated. But for now... And that's the most normal bear region you can hope from securing draws in 17 moves. And I'd say that's everything. Thank you everybody for watching this video. We'll get part 2 uploaded in less than a week. Thank you everybody and 
Bye. Okay. Oh, also, everybody, subscribe to Big Knowledge. We're getting to 50 subscribers. Better content will come very soon. And see you next time.